Hey folks, Flip here, and welcome on back to the Hardcore Minecraft world, where we are here in our lovely little village. We've got so much cool stuff rocking around this world, so thank y'all so very much for the support on this series so far. Please be sure to click that like button down below if you're excited for today's episode. Now, my friends, you can see both of these pickaxes. We got the Flippy Picky and the plain old Silk Touch Diamond Pickaxe over here. Both of them are near broken, and well, our diamond supply is starting to get a little low. I know now we have 39 that's still a very good number of them but we don't have mending yet and we don't really have a great supply of diamonds left over because if you see right here that's gonna take one two and three more than three diamonds for that one and more than three for this one as well so what i'm gonna do here instead is crafting up two new dummy diamond pickaxes we can go ahead and just use three right there a little bit of a pro play right here for you. So it maxes out at only three diamonds instead of me and use four. What I would love to do today, one, is I really want to build a castle. So we're going to start planning out a big old castle build here very, very soon. And two, we got to go mining for a bunch more diamonds. You know, we really don't have librarian villagers or an experience farm to really utilize mending. So that's all future foot problems, right? Awesome. Great. Now, first thing, my friends, I've got something to show you all. I've spent a little bit of time here between the episodes of building a brand new house for our village down here at the docks, and I am so very happy with it. This thing has come together very, very well. We can see down here in the front, we got a nice little bit of a ground area underneath with a bunch of coarse dirt and dirt. We got a nice little workstation down here. Not really too sure what it's going to be doing. Inside of here, just a bunch of empty stuff and, yep, some junk blocks I left behind that I can tape back to the storage room. Then the very cool part is the house is actually on the second layer so we have this interior space in here but i was like you know what i just want to build i just want to get a house built out here and this is what it turned out to be what do y'all think about that one i really like it now that being said i mentioned castles right yep we haven't done a castle for quite some time it's been way too long i used to only really build castles in this game i loved building castles i love building castles and i think we got to do one right on top of this hill right over here i've been looking at this thing so much ever since we settled into this area trying to figure out something that i can throw on top of the hill I think today is going to be all about doing the outline and the planning phase for it because I really want to get a lot of that mining stuff done. But I think right up here will be such a great view. But look at this awesome hill. We got the river right in front of it for a moat ready to go. We can do something maybe on that outer edge over there with like a bridge between the castle structures. And I'm so very excited for it. But first, my friends, it's time to go do some mining. Now I've got a bunch of torches on me. I'm bringing a stack of the dark oak logs so we can craft a bunch more if we need to. And we've got the silk touch and fortune pickaxe, which I realized that over here, we got an ender pearl in the last episode, which means we can make an eye of ender with the blaze powder right here. Then we get our eye of ender, which is absolutely awesome because that means we can double the size of our backpack with a brand new ender chest. Look at that guy right there. As long as we use our silk touch pickaxe to break it, we get the thing back and we can take this wherever we want. So we now have double the storage so we can move around with us all the time. And that is fantastic. Or might I say, fan whipping tastic So that's going to be great. We're going to be headed right in here today and using our strip mine, which, yep, I should have looked at the bottom first. And we landed it safe and sound. We've got all this stuff down here. Is there any extra cobblestone? Oh, there's a little bit in there. That's awesome. Both of the strip mines we have right here have been utilized pretty heavily, so I think we might be starting a new batch. What are you doing? Three blocks over? I've got to come down and decorate this area. Nope, that's two blocks. I'm going to be using the fortune pickaxe right now because I want to get some cobblestone so we can use it for building and everything and actually crafting up all of those redstone components we made last time for the sugarcane farm. Use pretty much all the cobblestone I had, so we got to replenish that. And we've found one of the caves that I've mined through many, many times. Oh, it looks like it goes right onto another strip mine there. Perfect. Trying to make sure I'm not missing any diamonds anywhere. I knew I should have brought Nova, the diamond sniffer down here with me. She would have been able to help me find these. We've went all the way from there to here and have not found a single piece so far. And I'm realizing now uh, I moved the strip mine over a block. <laughs> if we just ignore it, it's like it never happened. Yeah, just gonna keep going. How did I do that? Made it all the way to the ocean and not a single diamond anywhere. <laughs> Oh my gosh, we have almost an entirely full inventory here. I didn't find a single diamond at all. I blame it on the fact that I went over a block. Double checking that I counted this. That is three blocks right there as far as my brain can tell me right now. So we're just going to go straight off this way. So far this time we're actually finding things, which is pretty cool. Got some iron and some gold. <laughs> oh, dark spooky cave. 
Um, anything over here? No, it's the dead end of a cave. Okay, that's that's a nice little cave here. I like this place. We have our own private lava jacuzzi. Nothing besides a few bits of redstone in here, but we're at a half stack of iron now, which is more than we got the entire other strip mine, so that's pretty good. And I'm actually going in a straight line this time. And a mine shaft? It looks like we've already explored this one though, right? Yes, yes, this is where we stopped mining in this direction last time and almost died to a creeper and a few baby spiders. I feel like I totally set the strip mine up in the wrong direction, seeing as there's so many things just really close to it. We actually don't get to get too far. Oh my god, okay, okay, maybe maybe we do need to be careful in here and not just running through everything. Woo, hi, hi, yes, hello. Thank God they get caught on this little corner of the fence here. That makes it a lot easier. All right, there we go. Oh, okay, well, that happened. That just happened right in front of us, it's fine. There is a big part of me that wants to, to just let a creeper explode nearby and just do that, just see what it happens. We have blast protection four and protection on, oh, we don't have protection on that piece. Okay, we might still die, but I just wanna know. I just wanna know if one protection four piece in hardcore can keep you alive from a creeper killing you. That would just make me so much more calm inside this world. Calm, tranquility, peace. How I've managed to fill an entire ender chest full of a lot of just random junk inside of here with mostly stacks of things, or at least blocks of something, and we still haven't found a diamond? Ah, man, that sucks. It's bring your kid to work day. Well, kids to work day. Oh my gosh, he has triplets. They're just gonna stay behind that rail until we get rid of all of them, please, nope. Oh, creeper, yeah! Just trying to light up these areas so it's a little safer to move around and I keep going around a corner. It's like, oh my gosh, mobs everywhere. That's not a dark, spooky, ominous tunnel at all. No, definitely not. Oh, we have another spider spawner. Oh, there's another one. Okay, okay. Uh, that way we're gonna leave for just a moment. I need to regroup and make more torches. I need to make more torches before we do that. Oh my gosh, we found diamonds, finally. Oh, it's not, not for nothing. Yes. That was me attempting to word. It's been a very long mining session to not have anything. And finally we get some diamonds. Is it one? No, it's at least, oh, it's at least five. It's at least five. That is good, good vein. There we go. We've got nine more diamonds for ourselves. That's three more pickaxes. I really appreciate the game over here, uh, putting all the gravel in the way so that we couldn't actually get through to go fight the baby spiders. But I think I'm ready at this point in time. Yeah, there he is, there he is, there he is. I'm gonna get rid of it. Extermination. Back to doing what I do best of gathering up iron because that's all I'm breaking. <gasps> we found diamonds. Oh my gosh. I was following the iron and it leads me to the diamonds. Oh, I love it. It's right down at the bedrock though. See, there's one. There's... Ev <laughs> oh, that's so sad. The bedrock. It's probably like one right behind there. Can we get underneath it? No, it's still stone. Oh no, it was just the one. No, there's a second one. Ha ha. Found it in the bedrock. <laughs> We're up to 14 diamonds over, uh, we got a, over a stack of blocks of redstone, which is pretty legit, and we've got a lot of other stuff in here too. And we've got some more diamonds in the roof down here. That is absolutely awesome. Grabbing up the lapis, ooh, iron right there too, look at that. And we've got some more right here at the very corner. I almost didn't look all the way down here. I was like, there can't be anything, and it's just one. There's only one and it was only one diamond. First, the bedrock robs us of our diamonds, and now the mine shaft itself robs us of even more diamonds. That is very creepy looking. That is super creepy looking. I guess it is a creeper, it makes sense. That was just so ominous. Oh, there's even diamonds in the corner. Oh my God, we're getting way too lucky on these now. They're always like very few amounts to them, but it's just so satisfying. Doesn't matter how many diamonds in our vein, any diamond vein is a good one. And the chest is just a bunch of coal. 29 diamonds for ourselves now, and how many stacks of everything else do we have? This is one fancy schmancy looking ender chest for us right now, that is so good. I'm starting to feel pretty confident in this mining mission that we got a lot of good stuff here today. So I'm gonna just grab the remaining things down this edge of the mine shaft, and I think I'm gonna find my way back home. Definitely don't need rotten flesh for us. Found the old strip mine line here to get ourselves back up through our own mine shafts that we've been making. Wait, there's actually some coal right over here. How could I leave that before? I've definitely been through here. There's torches everywhere. Much better. Okay, oh, that's spiders, not much better. I'm pretty sure we now have enough lapis to last us for the forever, basically forever, because I don't really build with the thing and all I use it for is enchanting. 
Making an ender chest to go mining with early game in Minecraft. If you can do it and you got silk touch, I think it's probably one of the best things you can do to help yourself just get ahead and be able to carry so much more stuff. It's basically as close as you're going to get to shulker boxes until the absolute end game. Threw all of the iron and everything we had into the smelters, and it is time to see what the total of diamonds is at 62. Ah, oh, man, just stunned. just shy of the full stack of diamonds in there. Oh, well, that is absolutely awesome. That turned out to be a really good mining session at the end there. At the beginning, I was getting a little worried. I think one of my favorite parts is all the string we got. So much more decorative sugarcane potential. It is time to pull out the axe and chop down every single tree on this hill over here so we can see how much space we are actually working with for this good old castle build that we're going to be doing here. So my friends, it is time for a quick little time lapse. I present to you the castle. No, just kidding. This is where I want to start things out. I've got a little bit of a plan in mind for what I want this entire thing to look like. So I got the first building laid out. We're going to have a giant tower with a little bit of a hall connected to it. And oh my gosh, my friends, while I was clearing out the trees, I was getting so very excited for getting everything set up over here. And oh my gosh, I cannot wait to get to some castle building. So what I'm thinking over here, we can have an archway going across. The and then we can start another structure right off over in here, which this one I thought would be kind of fun if we did like what right here. That brings us five, six and seven right like that, a dude. And we stretch it off over here. There's a lot of different buildings that I love to to include inside of castles because you can make castles so unique with all of the different structures from stables to gatehouses to mess halls to barracks to feasting halls to the kitchen the everything else that we're going to include so we're going to occupy that entire area over there for a bit more of a fancy palace where the royal family would be living or whoever is overseeing this region and this is going to be a lot more of the castle workers the guards the everything else inside this area we can finish a moat going around that entire thing to turn into an island by extending the river along the riverbed over there and oh it's going to be so good now this guy right back here we have what seven blocks long and then we have nine more right there which brings it up to 18 so I think I might stretch them out one more time right over here and then how wide do we want it giving ourselves a seven wide interior space should allow us to do something pretty cool in there and give two thick walls if we want to on these and I know the roof lines are going to be a little wonky and crazy we can always add some towers in to add more pizzazz and life into the structure as we're going if we really want to so I'm leaving them kind of as is and kind of weirder stuff along here as we're going the cool part about this one though is it's going to be connecting into the gatehouse which will be right here on the corner just the plan that we're making here today folks we're gonna actually figure out what this thing looks like as we're going and block palette wise I still have no ideas but I want to do something cool I'm almost thinking we go with like wooden walls to the castle so it can have like a tan or almost like stripped jungle wood and jungle planks and oak logs and granite so we get like a really cool earthy colored castle let me know what palette ideas you have or blocks I should try to include in here I'm really trying to find something more unique this will be a seven wide space in the middle for a gate for ourselves and then what I'm going to do on this side just so we have two different shapes we have a larger structure there and then we have a smaller structure over here for the other end of the gatehouse now the next thing is we need to have a wall going all the way around this way and we need to have our pathway coming but a cool way that you make castles so much more interesting as you're going is by adding some extra gateways as we're moving so i'm thinking on the other corner of this little weird shape that we made over here is we make a circle tower coming right out here that can also serve as a staircase for ourselves but that will have a diagonal-ish gateway coming out of it that'll be something right along here that'll probably just be an archway that can lead ourselves over to another bit of a wall section right here which we can have an even larger circle tower and maybe on the outsides we do just the square ones or we can go somewhat in between and have it rounded on the corners and we still do the five by five interior that could work out pretty well for us and then this is probably just going to be connecting with a wall coming all the way across to here now, I do like the walls that I build to be a few blocks thick, so we're going to try and at least give ourselves uh, three blocks, I think, because then we can have an interior middle space to work with, too, if we want to do some extra depth detailing. 
got the front gateway so now we can start thinking about a pathway would coming along the edge of the ocean over there right throughout here curving up its way around the hill until it's able to be moving kind of in this direction over throughout here I was also thinking it would be fun to have the pathway going around this side as well so we can have a little bit more interest into what we have around here different ways to explore throughout the region and it's all gonna come to a point where we're gonna have a bridge going across to that side enough blabbing time to just get a bunch of blocks down here and I got the whole first side finished out here with a lot of awesome shapes to it this is just a general plan though like a sketch so a lot of it will be changing as we're going but any ideas you have for new stuff let me know in the comments below I've started working on the other side and holy cow I cannot get the mob sounds to stop because there's so many dang caves inside this place these islands are just full of empty hollow caves and I've run across so many spiders and skeletons and now a potionified spider up here what potion do you have dude but it's fine though because the area is starting to look super duper cool above ground the first side over there is completely finished as we saw in the little time lapse and then i've got an idea for this side over here i went with the exact same design we had for the bridge on that side with those two little two by two guys and then brought them all the way over to here to do that whole thing and i was thinking we just kind of stretch this off directly at a diagonal here for just a few blocks until we get to a point where i could start making a large shape for a hall and I'm thinking this is going to be an absolutely massive boxy structure that will just add a bunch of really cool roof segments to and everything like that and add some jut outs with towers and things on the corner. But this can be a primary living space for ourselves or maybe our glorious puppy dogs. I think we build this castle for Coda and Nova. I think that's I think that's a good way to go. I'm sorry, turtle. I have to occupy this corner of the beach. Thank you very much. You can go find a new spot. I've went through absolutely so much cobblestone making this thing, but it's going to be all worth it to have the plan laid out here. We know what we need to do in the future, and oh, it's going to be so good. Do we go to that corner? Yes. Yes, we do. This section over here is just a big old box, and we've got a nice little front area over here, which I think would be really cool, and a tower on the far corner where we kicked the turtle out, but he seems to be chilling right over there now. He found a friend, so it's all really good. Just forced him to socialize a little bit. Branch out of his comfort zone. No more hiding in his own shell. Ah, get it? What I was thinking around here though, so we can have a curving line coming all the way forward this way and I'm starting to run out of cobblestone so I might not be able to plan this whole thing. Hopefully I have some more back at the base. But what I wanted to have is basically bring in this line as a beautiful curvy section coming all the way over to here to where we can have a yet another giant rectangle. You know it, that's how we build castles, one rectangle at a time. I'm not really measuring these shapes out anymore. This is more of a rough idea of the general idea that I wanna do. And once we come back and actually get to building this section, cause I wanna build the entire first section before we expand to the palace area, we'll at least be able to get a better idea of what we wanna do over here for sure. So the first side I calculated a little bit more cause that's what we're gonna do first. And then we'll get the style down and see how this will all blend into it. It is a dang good thing that we are building a castle because these dudes will not stop walking around in the area. All they wanna do is come and pillage and destroy and take everything away from me. And uh, thank God that they're finally walking away. But this dude over here is like, I saw something. I'm gonna keep watching. I've been working on the castle a little bit. The sun is about to set here yet again but I've got a diagonal gateway planned out right here so we're gonna have a front little courtyard section between the wall and the wall over there that we've got set up some pretty trees a garden area but the plan was that we have this going all the way over there this is the giant palace structure itself where everybody's probably living in I know we said that corner but I've changed my mind over here so we've got a big old place for all this the throne room all of that good stuff and I was gonna bring this down here take it up over this way just a few more blocks I think what I might do to be honest is just take it off here and that'll be the end of the planning for now so we just have this giant blob of structure inside of here because I want to somehow have an open walkway area and then the buildings are all going to be here layered on top of each other going very high in the sky so hopefully we get an elytra before we make it to this section because I don't want to fall off and just die. I can't believe I never noticed there is this end portal down here and also an absolutely massive ravine. Look at that chunk air though. I feel like that generates a lot in 116, but I want to come down here and see if we can't steal this chest and the block of gold real fast because uh, something tells me blackstone could be pretty good for the roof for this build. So I want to be able to have a bunch of, the ooh, another golden apple, a thorns helmet, and I'll take the obsidian, but nah, I'm going to leave everything else. That rock right out there, I'm looking at this for the first time, I feel like, with a set of new eyes. That right there alone looks like a wizard tower. That could be an awesome place to extend 
then another one of those guys just kind of transplant and put a copy of it right on top of that tower over there could be so very cool i can't wait to keep working on this coastline i think the plan is just to keep growing along the coastline and then also working on the mushroom island i know we haven't touched that at all in today's episode but wow, I'm so excited to get this build rocking first. I didn't want to tackle all the terraforming and then get into the building. I'm really wanting to get into building like right away, which is why we're doing this castle project first. Speaking of the village, however, one thing I think I've realized I want to use in the castle so far is some way of using brick and a few of the terracottas probably. I, ju I just don't want to work in the gray stone palette that we normally see inside of minecraft i want to do something different just to have the fun with it so i think setting up a few stonemason villagers could really help us out because we now that we have the plan down for the castle i have to some way find enough blocks to be able to build up the entire castle which i was looking at my stats recently in this world because you know it's something that i like to do every once in a while and i noticed this look at my times used number six we have potatoes i've planted almost three thousand potatoes inside of this Minecraft world. I don't know how to feel about that quite yet. Very quickly though, let's take one of the diamonds that we acquired earlier, grab some lapis with us, and I wanna make an enchanted diamond shovel because I have been breaking way too many of these guys to uh, not have one at this point in time. Just efficiency four, unbreaking three. Efficiency four, unbreaking three. That's all I want, and please, no! That's the exact opposite of what I want. Ooh, we might be able to get back up to level 30 though. It's gonna be close. Yes, we did it. Okay, take two, take two. What do we get? Unbreaking three, I'm a little scared. Yes, I will take that. That is a great shovel. But one thing I was thinking we could do before actually jumping over, I know, sorry, another tangent of a project here is I want to get a pathway over to the castle so I can at least have that roughly planned out using some coarse dirt and probably just some shovel in action for some path blocks. Nova, I'm building you the biggest doghouse and bestest doghouse you could ever want. You're gonna love it so much. One way or another, I'm gonna find ya, I'm gonna get ya, and we're gonna start a pathway right here. Some way, it's gonna connect to this point. I don't know that way quite yet, but eventually it will be right here. And at some point or another, it's gonna finish here. Probably quite a few blocks higher in the sky because we wanna make it feel like we're walking up to a castle on a hill. Is it bad that the thing I'm most excited about for expanding the roadway and building the castle and everything is it gives me a great excuse to fill this entire plains bound with more potato fields? Yeah, I'm gonna, we're probably gonna do that at some point. It's gonna be glorious. Technoblade will never have imagined so many potatoes inside of a Minecraft world. Something tells me it might be about time to get rid of the melon and pumpkin farm and just send the pathway off throughout here because then it'll connect into all the other pathways that we have a lot more easily. And I can tell you what, for sure I will be walking through this area instead of going all the way back along the water and then up into the house. No, that's just never gonna happen. But the path is all good over here. We now have three turtley boys hanging out there on the beach side and I love it. I cannot and will not be stopped. It's time to do a bunch of villager trading, so I'm gonna tear up half of this carrot field probably and plant it all right back down and see how many we can get. Fill the under chest with those and then do the same for the potato field right over there. We have definitely planted over 3,000 potatoes now at this point. Almost transferred that entire field around because I my inventory zone was completely full already. Got the entire carrot one down and it's time to head over to the Mushroom Island and see what we got rocking there. And down we go into the depths. How many of these guys do we have? Four, we've got five and six. We, ooh, we've got 10 with two down there ready to go. We actually have exactly as many as we need if we wanna do those stonemasons today. Now, before we get to the stonemasons though, let's get as many emeralds as we possibly can. I've got 53 in there rocking and I have another 64 on me right now, but look at me carrots I have too. Oh, it's gonna be great. Let's do some trading. Right, you don't, you don't trade potatoes. You do though, hi. Entire inventory of potatoes got me 52 emeralds. Wow, I was expecting more than that for some reason. We really got to get these trades uh, discounted here soon. And the carrots and everything else. We've got our first melon trades unlocked here though. Look at that. Oh, it's so good. So much experience coming through too. Oh, it's amazing. We're already up to level 32. I'm sorry, buddy, at the end. You got nothing today. You got no trades. There we go, almost four full stacks of emeralds for ourselves, and now it's time to move a bunch of these dudes down here, and I think I'm gonna have to move the ender chest so that we can take the rail all the way around there and not mess up any of the path block action. Slowly, I'm gonna be pinching all of the oak planks from this entire area so that I can keep making some ren. I need more iron. 
Dang it. I was gonna try and make a bunch of rails, but we have no iron to do it. Do you have any iron? No, you just have more rails. Ah! Found another minecart with a chest in here. Look at all those rails. Oh, a name tag. That's actually huge. I was waiting on finding a name tag so we could get a zombie villager down here and start doing all of the conversion stuff to get those cheaper trades. So that means we can do it now. Underground oak plant gathering session completed here. We've now got some trap doors up there so the villagers can't get out. And I got 26 more iron ore out of it, which is pretty sweet. And there we go. We've got all the stone cutters we're gonna need. Time to send some villagers down. Number one, you are off and ready to go, my friend. Goodbye. All the way in the corner pocket. Let's go ahead and do that guy. Break out the stone cutter, place him down. And I believe if I do this, yes, right there. He did not die, that's perfect. And the brick trades are coming in. That's gonna be glorious. Final villager is getting into place now. Perfect, right in there, my friend. Thank you very much. Take a seat. Here is your lovely little stone cutter. Yes, yes, thank you. You're gonna squeeze that right in there. And I gotta get the mine cards from these two. Perfect, there we go. We've got nine stone cutters down here now, which is absolutely amazing. If we take this guy right like that, we can get so many bricks. And a heck of a lot of levels too, holy cow. Okay, so there we go. Now we've got, uh, how many stacks of bricks is that? And that was about a stack of emeralds right there. And that got us up to two and a half stacks of brick blocks, which is amazing. What I'm really curious about though, with all of these stonemason villagers that we have, and I believe we're gonna eventually have to expand how many of them we have down here, because my friends, I really wanna be able to work with terracotta and we have not found a mesa yet, but it is possible once you get stonemason villagers unlocked enough, I think it's to the third level or maybe it is the final level, but they can trade glazed terracotta or regular terracotta to you. But now we've got a heck of a lot of bricks right there. That's almost six stacks of them. And that was about a stack and a half of emeralds. Oh, that's gonna be so good. You know what we can do though? A lot of that stone is sitting in there. What if we just take some of this stuff and turn it into emeralds? Yes, and so many levels up these guys too. Now we've got diorite for emeralds or emeralds for polished diorite, that's amazing. And then we've got andesite and granite for emeralds over there too. I noticed it was getting to be nighttime, so I decided to run back home and get a name tag ready to go for ourselves here and grabbed a little bit of netherrack because I want to put a zombie in a box because I think we can find one. On the edges of the mushroom island, there are a few little grassy patches that are not mushroom, mushroom island, so mobs can spawn on them. We just got to find one of those and get a zombie to... Like these right here, a zombie should be able to spawn on a plot like this, because as you can see, it's just the ocean biome. So if we keep running around, we might be able to find one. All I've found so far is a dang spider on top of a mushroom. Nobody wanted to spawn on my little platform over here. Oh my gosh, we got one. Look at that, he's right there. Don't go in the water, don't go in the water. No, don't go in the water. No, you're gonna turn into a drowned. Can you swim? No, come on, this is, this is how we're going. This is how this, the one zombie I find of the entire night is gonna go. Gonna turn into a drown right in front of me. Oh, you're learning, you're learning, he's learning. Oh my gosh, I have the perfect name for you, buddy. And there's even a lot of, the sun's about to come up here too. Come on this way. I have to make sure I get you into a secure position before I give you your name. Up this way, up this way, my golden zombie friend. We gotta move fast, bud, we gotta move fast. That helmet is gonna keep you alive for a little bit longer, thankfully, but let's go, 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 go. I'll just put him in the ground somewhere if he starts burning, but it'll be fine. We just gotta get him a little bit closer. We're almost there. Please don't die, please don't die, please don't die. It took way long to get a zombie to actually spawn on this island, which you know, good thing for us on surviving and all that, but come on, I need this guy. I'm just gonna put him right down here, just right on the edge of this hill. I don't know where to take him quite yet, so we're just gonna prep up a little area to hold a zombie. Oh no, no, come on, I thought you were in the, I thought you were in the hole. And he's trapped. Okay, there we go. The glorious name I have for you today is Henry. Hi, Henry. How you doing? You're gonna hang out here with me, okay? I'll come back for you later. Thanks, Henry. But that is so much stuff happening in today's episode. My friends, I do hope you have enjoyed this one. Please be sure to click that like button down below if you have. Let me know what things we gotta be included for the castle and all of that good stuff. I'm so very excited. Any ideas on the block, block palettes and stuff like that, again, please be sure to let me know down in the comments below. Would very much love all of your help on this one here. Subscribe if you are brand new, my friends. Click that like button if you have not already, and I will catch you on the flip side.